Hello. Um, I'm going to address a really important question that I probably should have addressed in my first tutorial. Uh, it is, what does my haplogroup mean? Um, so this is the most often asked question of anyone who does a uh, Y DNA test. What does my haplogroup mean? Um, you can ask people uh, in forums, but I recommend before you do that, why not just look at the Y full tree first yourself? Um, go to yfull.com slash tree. And in the top right, there's a search button and you can just type in the name of your haplogroup. group. Um, and you can then see the age of your haplogroup. group. Uh, and um, you see country flags and regional codes. If you mouse over the regional codes, then you see where in that country that the sample came from and maybe what language that person's most distant known ancestor uh, spoke. Uh, this can be this can this combination of uh, regional code and linguistic code can be can be informative um especially in areas like uh uh in the middle east or or just other just any country that has really ethnically diverse populations um to know that someone is someone's ancestors from a specific region of that country and that they spoke a certain language uh gives you an idea of their ethnic background and uh um, of course, if you go back thousands of years, the ethnic background of who you are, who your ancestor from just 100 years ago, it's, it's not going to be as informative, but we have to use whatever information we have to try to figure out um, who our ancient ancestors were. So uh, anyway, what I said was, I recommend before you ask anyone, just spend this minute or two uh, look at the y full tree for your haplogroup so when you're in the search uh field of y full uh tree just type the name of the snip without any haplogroup prefix and uh hit enter and then you'll see if this snip is only in one haplogroup uh i mean if this snip only defines one branch of of some haplogroup then there will only be one option for you to click it. Sometimes a SNP is uh, in multiple uh, haplogroups defining multiple branches. Um, then you just have to pick which one is the one that uh, you're talking about, which branch you want to look at. Um, if if your if your SNP oh and it, and it, and if if you just type like J two or j1 or i1 or i2 or r1 r1 b r1 a uh yfl supports these name lookups uh but uh on, only r1 b and r1 a are supported by you typing in an a or a b anything else if you're don't you can't type in the isogg code that won't work you just you can type in like the letter of your haplogroup and then a one two or three or whatever number it is that you can look it up by otherwise you need to enter the snip uh if your haplogroup if nothing comes back then um you can try uh family tree dna haplo tree it's the second it would be my second alternative to check um if i can't find it uh subclade on the y full tree um uh, the for some haplogroups that are um that are more common in america uh then you there may be more there will there could be significantly more samples on the family tree dna tree um but this tree doesn't show the informative stuff uh that the wifel tree shows uh like doesn't show uh, estimates of when the most recent common ancestor lived, 
and um, doesn't show regional codes within countries. So it's just country level. Um, uh, and also, uh, oh, it doesn't show the ancient samples. So, and it doesn't show language codes. So it's, it's, it's a lot less information that uh, even though I have two relatives, two of my male lines, my mom's male line and my mom's mom's male line are both R1B L48. One is one that's from Germany and one is one that's from um, England. But the I can't really get into the... I can't really get into the uh, ancient ancestry of these lineages uh, by looking at the uh, family tree DNA haplo tree because it just doesn't. It's just not as informative, and I and I feel like it's. I would be spending time looking at unprecise information that won't really lead me anywhere. Uh, or maybe it's just because these lineages people already have a basic idea of it's been in Europe for four to four or 5,000 years. Uh, so it's not as much of a mystery, but without the regional codes in, in their tree, uh, you're not really going to be able to get a precise idea of the migrations from looking at that tree. I mean, anyway, these are, these are for these haplogroups, groups, uh, they're studied by, scientists um much more often so you you all you would really just try to find some study that talks about them because they're so populous there that uh researchers care about them much more spend millions of dollars on them um my half of group is not so uh the waifel tree is by far the best resource and it's like ac academic papers come out about my half of the group of j2b and it's it's they could learn a lot by looking at all the samples that we already have put together uh on the wifel tree rather than they just sample some people from like one country uh and only do sdr tests uh so i i i'm i think the future is uh in the future of uh trying to figure out your ancient ancestry of your haplogroup is uh, more people recognizing the value of having a really detailed tree with specific geographic and linguistic and ages information. Um, uh, okay, so um, spend a little time doing this yourself. And then you're you and then you can go in a forum and you can ask someone because there's nuances with this with this information. Uh, you might see a lot of countries in your subclade in your haplogroup uh, on the Wifel tree uh, or or haplo or family tree DNA tree. Uh, you might see some uh, some countries represented, uh, but maybe those countries are just countries where almost every single person has done a test. And it could be that your haplogroup is also found in other countries where no one did a test. You know, we have only, I think, one person from Ghana on the, uh, on the, on the Y pole tree. There's countries that have nobody that did a test. Uh, so, uh, so there is, there is nuances with this, with this, uh, with the, these country codes. Some countries are sampled less than others. Um, there is a resource that I've made available uh, where you can see the relative sampling rates of different countries computed automatically each month from the samples, geolocated samples from the Y full tree. There you can see the countries that are red means that uh, they have higher than average world sampling rate per capita, and the countries that are uh, blue mean it's lower than average. So then you can get an idea. So for example, practical use case, uh, tons of people in my haplo group are from England, but, uh, but tons of people from England 
do Y DNA tests. And if you divide all the people from England by the total number of people that do these tests, uh, uh, the ones that are in my haplogroup, it turns out, well, it's uh, an English origin doesn't make sense for most of the lineages in my haplogroup, but we have a lot of guys show up from England because they do a lot of testing. Uh, some haplogroups see similar phenomenon uh, with Arabs. Many Arab countries test a lot. There's a lot of South Asian uh, lineages that look pretty clearly associated with Indo-Iranian migrations uh, uh, that are from the late Bronze Age. Uh, but some of them have branches that ended up in Bahrain or uh, elsewhere in the Middle East uh, among populations that are now Arabs uh, or, or, or other populations. But, but when you look at the, at the subclade from uh, 3,600 years ago, that's like a magic number. I see a lot on the y tree. Uh, this, this is about when I think Indo-Iranian uh, groups um, started to migrate out of the uh, Bactria Margiana area to either South Asia or uh, West Asia. Um, when you see when you see a group and it has like a half a dozen or or a dozen subclades found in India, which is not sampled very much per capita compared to uh, some of these Arab nations. And then it only has like one, one or maybe two uh, subclades in Arabia. Or uh, then uh, common sense is that the that the ancestor was in one of these Indo-Iranian groups, or or living in 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 the area where they came from, and uh, uh, the outlier are are the are the Arabs. Uh, other groups have been in uh, Arabia for thousands and thousands of years. Some of the lineages of J1 and, and uh, probably T and many other lineages. I'm not going to talk about every Apple group right now. Um, I'm just giving you some practical pointers. So uh, pet, a pet peeve of mine is uh, when, when someone who doesn't really know much about a haplogroup answers somebody's question about what's what does my haplogroup mean uh and that's why i'm recommending you to just take two minutes to look at the samples yourself before you ask because you can save yourself from learning something that's just wrong uh and uh so a lot of these people are well-meaning and they believe what you're telling you uh, and, and, uh, they don't have an agenda. They just didn't do the homework themselves, believed some simplified answer that somebody told them 20 years ago. And even in, even in the, even in the, uh, projects in family tree DNA, I see people in my haplogroup J2, uh, I see, I see that the admin has given a label next to them that says, this guy, this guy, he's in J2. J2 means Semitic. Uh, J2 is like 20 something thousand years old. It, it uh, predates any of these linguistic groups. Uh, we are much more diverse geographically and we don't, we don't even really know about the ethnicities from back then very much. Uh, but these, but these, uh, we just need to, if everyone just spends two minutes looking at the actual raw data, you could say, uh, which you should use to make your judgment of where did these various haplogroups come from. Just spend two minutes looking at the uh, up-to-date raw data. And that's when I say raw data, I don't mean just the file of somebody's DNA. Just the data you use to make your opinion uh, is the y full tree uh, geolocated samples of different branches. Look at that. Don't just regurgitate what someone regurgitated to someone who regurgitated and it's just a, it's just a mess and it's wrong. And uh, people 
the simple answer is so appealing, but um, but the complex answer is much more interesting and usually more correct. Um, uh, a group that's that's ten thousand years old, it's not going to be Greeks. Okay, ten thousand years ago, we didn't know. Uh, there was Greeks, Greeks didn't exist. Even 5,000 years ago, there may have been proto, proto Greeks, like Minoans didn't speak Greek that we know of. Uh, so, uh, just be, just beware. Oh, if you're gonna definitely, it definitely makes sense to, um, get the opinion of a knowledgeable person in your haplogroup. So, so you should, uh, don't, don't just go on some, um, random forum and ask, what does my haplogroup mean? You should go. Cause then you get people that don't know anything about your haplogroup answering, go into, go in a forum, uh, devoted to your haplogroup and ask that question. And then at least, uh, I mean, there's still going to be people uh with with agendas every now and again that that uh might not really want to be seeing the data for what it says but at least you're in a group of people that are more knowledgeable with your half group and at least you'll get one of the somewhat viable competing theories usually there's like there's always some each half group has its like biggest most controversial thing that people in that half group are split over what is the truth? Like where, what is the real migration story? Uh, at least if the thing that you get told is one of the major competing theories, then maybe, maybe you're in good hands. Uh, but it's best if everybody just looks at the data themselves and, uh, and, uh, doesn't get hung up on proving that they were right. That's the most annoying thing when you see somebody's contributions in your haplogroup research project uh, and almost everything they post contains, yeah, I was right about this. I was right about that. Uh, I find it much more interesting when what I and most people presumed to be true uh, turn out, turns out to be wrong. I'm actually looking for that. Because that's more interesting. You, you should be looking to be wrong. That's how that's I mean, that's how science, uh, the scientific community, I'm not an academic, I'm an engineer. Uh, but the scientific community is trying to prove this thing that nobody thought was true. And uh, uh yeah scientists do this historians do this and sometimes they try to prove things that are off the wall and they some of them fudge their data to make it to make it look true and they we find out later that they were disingenuous about it uh because the only way to make a name for yourself is to come up with something that that is novel so everyone's trying to do novel stuff uh so it can there can be negative consequences of this, but but still the general the general I, I think that that approach is is if as long as you're healthy and intellectually honest about it and you really just want to find what is true, you should be looking to uh, find a counterexample to what everyone thinks is true uh, about something, and then you've added a little bit more complexity to the true story or what seems to be true uh, of the ancient history of your haplogroup. Okay, thanks. I hope, I hope this was informative. I think that's all I got for this one. Good luck with your research.